Hi, uh, I'm Ed in Wakudi, Red Swan CRE, and I'm here at the RRA Edge West uh, Conference with Matt Koleski. And Matt is the CEO of Arbor Capital, and he uh, really manages a, a large outfit of uh, RIAs. And we're here just to talk about where we see trends taking place in the industry. And Matt has um, successfully been able to uh, encourage a lot of your, your customers, your clients, how to start looking at digital assets. Um, maybe talk about how that transition is taking place right now with some of your clients. Yeah, that's a great question. Great to be here with you too, Ed. So um, we started, we have a traditional business, a traditional RIA, and what we did about five or six years ago was we started allocating to digital assets for our clients. And then quickly, quickly realized that there's a market for this, not just for our clients, but for other advisory firms. And as you and I have talked throughout the conference, right, we're very passionate about digital assets and what that means. And we want to have exposure for our clients. And so we've been on this crusade and this education campaign to expand advisors' understanding and knowledge of the importance of investing in this asset class. And so now we have an SMA that invests specifically in digital assets. And we have clients around the country now that are investing with us. So that's how we came to be in this in this, uh, in this in this asset class. And so most of the assets and digital assets, I'm sure that they're focused on are cryptocurrencies. You know, how are you helping them to you know, diversify and de-risk their investments in cryptocurrencies, for example? Yeah, that's a great question. So we, we look to, do, like, like any other type of investing, we look to diversify across and away from just one or two assets and expand what they have access to in terms of the portfolio so we can get into some of the DeFi protocols other types of layer one protocols to expand so you're not just owning one or two that and that because they each present their own type of risk and so taking just what we've learned from traditional wealth management and, and some of the traditional practices and applying them to digital assets is important understanding that this is fundamentally different technology that evolves and transforms on a daily basis which is very different like coke stock is coke stock right, right? you can buy it and it's not going to change a lot over over a year or a couple of years a digital asset can change from one week to the next. And so it's about under, helping our, our clients understand that and then help them to position it with their clients. And really, we use like the example of the NASDAQ and what technology has done in terms of transforming you know, the, the nature of our US stock market, right? I mean, it used to be dominated by banks and oil and now it's right. technology. And I don't think that's going to change. And just saying, well, look, let's look at what these companies have done and let's look at this new technology, blockchain, even AI, right? What transformative powers are they going to bring to bear? And should your clients have exposure to it? Yeah, interesting. Well, I am very fascinated by the number of um, assets moving over from the baby boomers to the millennials and Gen Xers. Uh, they, they say it's about $146 trillion of assets, yeah. of which you know, I, I like to fact point out there's about 42 trillion of that is real estate, investment mm -hmm. real estate. But as you're seeing this big transition, are, are you seeing this transition in your practice where some of your clients yes. are, yes. you know, fortunately passing away and the uh, offspring is now inheriting some of these assets? And are you seeing them kind of, uh, what's their change of, of attitude, what's their change of the way you would treat them or handle them as a prior, as opposed to some of their parents? Yeah, the, the next generation of investors are very different from the, the previous generation, right? The one they they have they don't want to work maybe with their parents' advisor, especially if that advisor is maybe set in some ways or practices from the last century, right? And so right. you have to ask as an advisor if you have a transition going on from your your clients, right, to the to their kids. Those kids are going to want and need different things from you. And so we chat a little bit. But yesterday or the day before, right, having at least that question, hey, do you have a digital asset account? Do you have a wallet? Do you have a Coinbase account? Ask the question because we found out when, as we talked to our advisors, they come back and say, yeah, most of these people do. They're dabbling with it in some way or another, and their kids definitely are. And it expands the universe, not just beyond, you know, digital assets and cryptocurrencies, but into NFTs and things that you're, you guys are talking about with, you know, securitized real estate and tokenized real estate that can sit on a blockchain. And if you're an advisor and you don't have an answer to it or just say, not for me, you're really going to miss out on the next generation of investors. 
So how's their appetite changing though from the traditional investments to some of these digital investments? Are they coming out and asking for unique types of investments or are you pushing this on them as an advisor? As an advisor, yeah, we felt, you know, it was our responsibility. We, we've always felt that this belongs in the alternative asset class. And so we would then talk to our clients and say, look, if, you're, if your end clients are comfortable with an alternative investment exposure, this is how we've done it. Digital assets fit in, into that. You know, obviously, we're not putting everything into it, but it starts the conversation. Absolutely. Well, at Red Swan, you know, we digitize commercial real estate, right. and so we are, are hoping that uh, we can bring a lot of content of high-quality digital investment real estate to the blockchain. How do you think that may help uh, in terms of the, what you're advising your clients on for diversification? Yeah, well, this dovetails into what I was saying before, like with the, this, it's technology, right? What you're doing is leveraging you know, an, an older type of investment with this new technology that allows for it, you know, so much more liquidity and a, a, a ways to engage other clients into these, uh, into these technologies. And, you know, I think we can kind of see where this is going, right? You should have, as, as more assets come on chain, right? The real world assets are moving on chain. Right. I don't think that is going backwards at all. In fact, we need the regulators in this country to kind of embrace that because this is, at the end of the day, it's just technology making everything more efficient from trading to settlement to portfolio management. Using blockchain to do that is just really the next step. And so it's about having the conversation with our clients to help them understand where the train is going. Yeah. Right? If we're going to keep settling stocks, you know, you, you trade it on a Thursday, Monday is a holiday and you get your money and, you know, five days later, come on. This is 2023, right? Absolutely. You know, um, you're, you, what you just hit on is very important because people don't realize that, you know, digital assets and the purchase of digital may be more efficient for them mm -hmm. as a process. But, um, you know, it really encourages the fact that you guys are advocates and mm -hmm. you guys are knowledgeable because we've been at this conference for the past three days and I've gone to other uh, IRA mm -hmm. and broker dealer conferences. I would say 95% have no idea what a digital security is. No. And, but how, how is it that you guys have come to learn about this and put this into your practice where many of your, your co colleagues in the industry have not? It's a good question. I think it just starts out with a curious nature, right? And understanding your fiduciary duty to your end client of always looking, not just taking what the status quo is giving you and saying, hey, what, what other things are out there? So for a lot of us, we started, you know, five, six, for me, it was like almost 10 years ago, trying to understand this asset class. And then from then it was just learning on your own. There was no resources. You know, fast forward five years, there's product that is starting to get released and there's organizations that are doing education for financial professionals. And we've talked about Rick yeah. Edelman's a program, a DAC FP, which is great. He has a certificate in blockchain and digital assets for financial professionals to learn more about it so they can have an answer. And in the other organization that, we're, that I'm involved with as well as Planner Dow, they've got a, also a, a, a certificate that is recognized, it's on Fender's website, so you can go and check it out. It's, it's probably a little bit more advanced for folks that have wallets and are looking to potentially use wallet custody architecture. So that's a whole nother discussion, but, um, and so there's a lot more resources now for people to get educated around digital assets and how they can approach them whether it is cryptocurrency or you know, tokenized real world assets that you know, are settling on a blockchain and how all this is gonna integrate in the future, I think is really fascinating. But what we tell people is have a response, have something in your practice where you can say, if you have the digital asset question, you can give an answer then to your clients or their beneficiaries, because it's, it's just gonna continue to, to get larger and larger and the need is gonna, gonna be there. Absolutely, you know, you mentioned earlier about regulatory and that's a big issue because mm -hmm. I think um, a lot of the market is fearful about entering yeah. because they're worried about, you know, defying the regulatory uh, jurisdiction. But as an IRA, uh, you are a large IRA with Arbor Capital. What percentage of your clientele would you say is accredited investors versus non-accredited? Probably about half are accredited investors. Okay. And so, but we've been offering this to all of our all of our clients. That's a good point. So you're educating even the non-educated, uh, a non-accredited yep. investor yeah. about how to invest in the digital security, and you're doing that in a, in a way that um, complies with the FE, uh, with FINRA, uh, because there's a checkbox where you can actually 
uh, advise them to acquire under your account? Is that how that works? Or maybe you can explain how that will work. So yeah, just in terms of semantics, so we are, these are digital assets. And so you, you're, you're operating more in the digitized security. security. And so we're not using those particular words. We're actually looking at it from a different standpoint and hoping we get clarity from the SEC okay. and the CFTC. But in terms of uh, that, yeah, it, we're offering this to every, to all of our clients. All right your now. clients. That's awesome. I think, yeah. well, this is really all I wanted to talk about today because I've just felt that you know, you're such a unique RA firm that our audience needs to know about you because we want to further perpetuate you know, the adoption of digital assets in the, in the industry, right. especially as it relates to real estate that we provide. But I want them to know about Arbor Capital Thank and you, about man. Matt because uh, you, know, you guys are doing a very good job of getting the word out. And like I said, out of the you know, number of IRAs and broker dealers we've met, uh, you're amongst the 10% <laughs> yeah. that really understand it and get it and perpetuated it. But I think you're leading the industry because all the ones that I've met here are also very excited about it. We're just not knowledgeable. So yeah. I just want to thank you for that. And thank you for taking the time for this, of course. this little interview. Yeah, it's been great. And likewise, I, one my, my final parting thought would be, you know, two years ago, everybody was talking about blockchain and digital assets, right? And now we've entered this kind of crypto winter. And it's gotten a little quiet. It's all AI now. But the people like you and us there that are in the space and building for the future, right? We're still we're committed because we realize that this is a technology that's going to be transformative, and it's been yeah. And I know we get excited just talking about it and being here. But yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're we're definitely committed, and like you said, our th our job is to actually create that content so that people have multiple choices that they can invest in. And I believe that you know we're building it. I yes. know they will come. And I mean, yes. it's yes. it's it's as advantageous yeah. for them to come. So. Anyway, thank you very much, Matt. Of course. Thank and you we'll see you next year. Thanks for having me.